Hello, and welcome to Unsolvable. In this week's episode, we will be discussing the mystery man of Sligo, an estranged man known only by his alias, Peter Bergman, whose body was discovered washed upon the shore. If you are ready, let's begin. The setting for today's mystery is the quaint Irish town Sligo, found along the northwest coast of Ireland. The year is 2009. The man in question is known only as Peter Bergman, although it was later discovered that this was not his actual name. Peter's true identity still remains a mystery. Peter was visiting the seaport town of Sligo and arrived on June the 12th. While little is known about the origin of this man, many locals and the staff working at the hotel where he stayed said he spoke with a thick German accent. Peter had a slender build, short grey hair and appeared to be in his late 50s or early 60s. He stood 5 feet 10 inches tall with blue eyes and a tan complexion. He was neatly groomed, his face was shaven and his hair was clean and combed. He was also well dressed, he wore a black leather jacket, trousers with a black belt and a pair of black shoes. From his appearance it was assumed Peter was a professional worker. The reason for his visit to Sligo remains unknown. His interactions with other people in the town during his visit were very limited. He kept himself to himself for the most part. He checked into Sligo City Hotel under the name of Peter Bergman. It is within his hotel room where he spent the majority of his time. He left a room on only a handful of occasions and usually only for a couple of hours at a time. While some might have viewed his habits as odd, there were no suspicions and no one ever questioned him on his intentions or why he was visiting the town. It was on Tuesday morning on June 16th that a male body was found washed upon the shore at the Roses Point Beach, a popular recreation destination and fishing area near Sligo. The body was discovered around 6.45am by Arthur Kinsella and his son Brian who was training for a triathlon. The deceased man was wearing a pair of purple speedo type swim trunks with his underpants over the top and a navy t-shirt tucked into them. The father and son said a prayer for the man before calling the police. It was then around 10 past 8 in the morning that Dr Valerie McGowan officially pronounced the man dead. An investigation was launched shortly after and it did not take the police long to realise that the body belonged to Peter Bergman. In Arthur Kinsella's report to the police, where he described finding the body, he said it was the body of a person and he appeared to have drowned and was laying face down on the sand. He looked about 65. We walked around the body just to make sure he was dead and I actually placed my hand on his ankle and it was marble cold. As part of this investigation, which lasted almost five months, the authorities began reviewing the town's CCTV footage over the four day period Peter had visited the town. As they began piecing the footage together and documenting his trip, they soon discovered Peter's strange behaviour leading up to his death. The very first recalling of Peter shows him exiting a bus at the Sligo bus station around 6.28pm on June 12th. The bus had travelled from Ulster Bus Depot in Derry 
and would have departed three to four hours earlier. Carrying a black shoulder bag and a standard carry-on luggage bag, he flagged down a taxi which took him to the Sligo City Hotel. It was later reported that Peter paid for his hotel room per night and in cash. During his stay at the hotel, he was seen on security footage leaving the building with a purple plastic bag full of items and personal effects. However, when he returned from his long walk, he was no longer carrying the bag. It is presumed that he had disposed of his belongings throughout the town and then folded the bag and put it in his pocket. Authorities were unable to identify what he threw away in the public rubbish bins as he used CCTV blind spots to his advantage. His movements were very meticulous as if he knew where to hide his personal belongings that could have identified him. On June 13th, Peter was seen walking to the post office around 10.50 a.m. He purchased eight postal stamps and airmail stickers. However, he was never seen posting any mail. The following day, on June 14th, he left the Sligo City Hotel around 11 a.m. and asked the taxi driver where he could find a nice quiet beach so he could swim. The taxi driver recommended Rose's Point, saying it would be the best place and proceeded to drive Peter to the beach. Peter later returned in the same taxi and was dropped off at the bus station in Sligo. Finally, on Monday, June 15th, the day before his body was discovered, Peter checked out of the hotel. Around 1pm, he handed in his room key. He left the hotel carrying a black shoulder bag, a purple plastic bag, and a black luggage bag. However, this black luggage bag was different to the one he was carrying when he first arrived in Sligo. He walked to the bus station via the Quayside shopping centre. He awkwardly waited in the doorway to the shopping centre for a number of minutes before continuing his walk to the bus station, still carrying all three bags. At 1.38pm, he ordered a cappuccino and a toasted ham and cheese sandwich at the bus station. While eating his food, he looked at pieces of paper that he kept in his pocket. After reading the pieces of paper, he tore the paper in half and threw it away in a nearby rubbish bin. He then mounted a bus that departed at 2.20pm for Rose's Point. It was reported that he was seen by 16 people while walking along the beach, casually greeting them as he passed by. These were the last sightings of Peter before his body was discovered the following day. Also, during the investigation, the police discovered that the address Peter had given the hotel when he checked in did not exist. The street reported did not exist in either Austria or Germany. Additionally, the postcode for the address did not match the city he stated, and the postcode 4472, which Peter gave the hotel, was unassigned. What is certain is that Peter wanted to remain unknown, and he preemptively planned his every move to ensure his true identity remained a mystery. The post-mortem report noted the body was found on Rose's Point Beach, with most of his clothes and belongings nearby on the shore. However, there was no wallet, money or form of identification discovered. Even though Peter had been washed up on the beach, the medical examiner Clive Kilgallen found no evidence of saltwater drowning. 
but also no signs of foul play that would give reason to believe the man's death was a homicide. However, it was documented that despite his well-groomed and dressed exterior, Peter seemed to be in very poor health. The post-mortem showed that he had advanced stages of prostate cancer and bone tumours. His heart showed signs of previous heart attacks and he possessed only one kidney, the other having been removed. Notably, for a man who had such serious health conditions, the toxicology report stated that he had no medication of any sort in his system. The medical examiner noted, due to his heart attacks and health status, Peter would have been in significant pain and would have required prescription pain medicine or at least over-the-counter pain relief. After the five-month-long investigation, which produced no leads, the body was finally laid to rest and was buried in Sligo. The funeral was attended by four members of the police. Six years later, in 2015, a French newspaper reporting on the mystery mentioned that they had contacted the Austrian police about the case and that the Austrian police commented that the Irish authorities never contacted them. In the newspaper report, it also mentioned that there was no Interpol notice for the unidentified man. It is believed that since the body did not fall into the two Interpol categories of missing person or wanted person, it would have been up to the man's country of origin to report him missing. While it isn't known why the man chose the alias Peter Bergman, some believe that he was inspired by Peter Gabriel Bergman, a German-American physicist born in 1915, who was best known for his work with Albert Einstein on unified field theory. There are many questions surrounding this case, and unfortunately, very few answers. While it seems this man came to Sligo to die, why did he go to such great lengths to conceal his identity? He was never reported missing in his home country, at least not that we know of, since there was no Interpol report, which could suggest he had no family or friends which again makes it ever more strange that he went to such great lengths to keep his identity a secret. Whoever Peter Bergman was, he will go down in folklore in the small Irish town of Sligo. And that's all for this week. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Please remember to like, subscribe and share our videos. And we will be back again next month on March 5th. I hope to see you all there. Until then, goodbye.